In this ImagePlotTL version 10 tutorial video, we will be looking at gel or blot analysis with multiple channel normalization using a housekeeping protein as a loading control. Specifically, we will be covering the following steps in the analysis workflow. Multiplex image creation, import into gel and blot analysis module, lane creation, background subtraction, band detection, molecular weight determination, normalization using a housekeeping protein on a separate channel, and finally exporting our results into Excel. The first step in the analysis workflow is to create a multiplex image combining all channels used for the analysis. We can do so using the create multiplex function from the ImagePlotTL main hub. Once open, we have the option to browse and select the files that we would like to combine into a multiplex image. The files do have to be from the same folder. In this case, we will choose these two here. Once completed, you can choose to write the DS file, which stands for dataset. And once this file is written, it goes to the same folder as the main images were from. Now that we have written our multi-channel DS file, we can open it in the gel and blot analysis module. To do so, we could choose the open button here on the right and browse to the DS file, which we have just created. Once open, we have full control over which channels are being displayed from this pull down menu up here. So if you want to choose both channels, have them both selected and we can see them here. We can also adjust the brightness and contrast as well as the colors for each one of our channels using the display function here. So for example, our infrared long channel, I would choose to have that one as blue. And we can also adjust the brightness and contrast specifically for that channel. In this case, I will increase it a little bit to get more visual resolution between our bands. And we can also do the same for the IR short channel and choose which color we would like to have for that one. In this case, I will choose red. We can also adjust the brightness and contrast appropriately here as well. So I will bring up the bottom just a little bit to get rid of some of that background, as well as decrease the top to be able to see my bands a little bit more clearly. Okay, once we have done this, we can go back to the main screen here where we can see different renditions of our image. For example, we have the 2D rendering up here, which shows any saturation in the image. Keep in mind the saturation we're seeing is only in the die front along the bottom and is shown as the orange pixels that we see there. To the right, we see a 3D rendering of our image with both channels, so you can see all of our bands of interest. This can be rotated to any orientation. Below that, we see a multi-channel image showing the different bands from our different channels displayed in their respective channels with the colors that we have chosen. Now that we have imported and adjusted our image, we can move on to the next step, which is creating our lanes. Creating lanes is a very similar process between single channel or multiplex images. You simply move here to the right, choose how many lanes that we have within our image, and then start in one corner of our image, click and drag to the opposite corner, making sure to incorporate our molecular weight ladders and also not to incorporate that die front at the bottom as it will affect the results. From here, you can then edit the box by pulling on all four of the corners to be able to make sure that it fits properly. And then we can also edit individual lanes if you would like to here. Finally, what I will do is I will rename lane one and lane 14 to molecular weight markers. Now that we have created our lanes, we have access to the rest of the steps in the analysis workflow. The next step is background subtraction. For the sake of time, I'm simply going to choose to do a rolling ball background subtraction and making sure that I am applying it to all channels within my image. For a full description of all of the different background subtraction options, please see the video that goes into detail with those. We can now proceed to the band detection step. From here, I like to perform an automatic detection using the default parameters. And we can see here that the software does a pretty good job at defining our bands. There are a couple modifications that we need to make. 
If the software did not do a good job with the default settings, I typically like to adjust my minimum slope where you can create more sensitivity by sliding this to the left, detecting more bands, or you can decrease sensitivity by moving that to the right. You can see we have fewer bands detected. What were we were right around 335 was a good value for this image. From here, we can adjust our bands that were detected. So for example, I'm going to get rid of all the bands in my molecular weight markers. We're going to be defining those independently. And to get rid of those, all you have to do is simply right click on each one of them in the image and they go away. Do the same thing for lane 14. We can also edit the bands in some of our other lanes, for example, lane 10. I can get rid of these two here because I know that they are not real bands and they're just artifacts in the image. Once we have detected our bands, we can move on to the molecular weight determination step. From here, we can choose which marker that we have within our image from this list here. If you're using one that's not from Cytiva, you could simply go to the Edit Molecular Weight Standard Templates button here and choose to add a new molecular weight standard. In our case, we're using the Amersham ECL Plex molecular weight markers, and we can now choose which channel has our molecular weight markers. In our case, it's the IR short channel, so we wanna make sure that's selected. Next, we can choose which lanes have our molecular weight markers, so we'll choose lane one, as well as lane 14. And also, you wanna make sure that no artifacts were included as a band. So for example, we had one spot on the image which it's thinking is a band there. Just simply click on it, and it will disregard it in the analysis. If there are other bands that were not detected, you simply click where those were, and it will update that as well. Once we have defined our molecular weight bands in the different lanes, we can see how that regression curve was created over here, and you can choose how that curve fit was made. For example, I will choose cubic spline, as this is a good fit for the molecular weight regression curve that we have. It's going to now use that standard curve to be able to determine the molecular weight of all of our other bands of interest, and all of those results are shown here in the data table at the bottom left. Now that we've performed our molecular weight determination, we can move on to the normalization step. You can see by default that no normalization has been done, and we need to choose which method of normalization we'd like to use from this pull-down menu. In this case, we're going to choose multi-channel band. The next step, it's going to ask us which channel is our reference channel. In our case, it's the IR short channel, which contains our loading control. The software now performs a normalization using the highest volume band in each one of our lanes. You can see that the bottom band in each one of our channel two images has the same value because these are all normalized to each other. Now that we've performed our normalization, we can view our results as well as export any results that we would like to to Excel. So for example, if we wanna choose the results for all lanes and then choose what parameters that we wanted to have in our results that's being exported, you could do so here. So for example, if you wanted to have your normalized volumes as well as your raw volumes, just to show the changes that had been made in each one of those, you can now export all of this directly to Excel using the export CSV function here.